Hey everybody, welcome to another Working Out with Aaron Briggs video. Aaron, what do we have today? Today is a core workout. Our core workouts are always a little shorter and they have just a couple of key moves. So if you're ready, go ahead and join us down on the ground, down on the mat. Now normally we jump right in, but because we're gonna be on your hands today, we're doing just a little bit of a wrist stretch. Uh, we invite you to do the same. I will oftentimes put my hands flat on the ground, maybe even the backs of my hands and lean on them. And again, if you're doing that, go really gentle. The idea is it's just a quick little stretch, okay? As far as the way the workout's gonna go, we're warming up with five basic movements. Each movement's gonna be about 30 seconds long. This first one is a mountain climber. And all you're doing with that one is holding yourself up in push-up position. And again, if those wrists are bugging you, you can be down on your forearms. I know some people, if they have some uh, weights at home, they'll grab the weights, kind of grab the weights, and uh, so their wrists are not at a, at bent at an angle. So that's always an option for you too. Okay, and again, remember, warm-up round is meant to be easy. So if it already feels like exercise, dial it back a little bit. Our second exercise is a hollow body hold. And again, we're gonna do this a couple of times a day. So here's your chance to really practice it and try to work on getting it really comfortable for you. Remember, our key recommendation here is to have your low back pressed into the ground. Your legs can be bent, they can be straight, they can be pointed straight up in the air, they can be pointed straight out towards the walls. Do whatever works for you, but just make sure that low back is pressing, you know, into the ground. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be squishing jelly beans down there or anything like that. Just keep it, you know, just keep it kind of gentle. All right, third Squishing exercise. Jelly bean would be hard. It would be tough to do. Third exercise is a plank with a leg lift. Now I'm doing this on my hands because I'm more comfortable. You totally can do this on your forearms if you want. And a leg lift, all we're trying to do is one, throw a little balance your way, right? It's kind of a C sneaky way of doing a three point plank where you only have three points of contact. And if you're keeping your leg a little straight and with that lift, you get a little glute work, a little butt, mm -hmm. butt action going for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fourth exercise, looks like we're just laying on the ground. We are, but we're working here. <laughs> it's called a Superman. <laughs> and a lot of people will, uh, the biggest mistake they make on this is they lift their heels and their hands up to the ceiling and that's not what we're doing. We're not trying to arch. If anything, we are pointing them straight out. Yes, we're coming up off the ground. That's kind of a byproduct, but you're really putting as much distance between your fingertips and your toes as you can. That can either be a hold or it can be kind of an on-off kind of a thing. And then our last exercise, back to our hollow body hold, but you're doing a flutter. We call this an ab flutter. So if you've done any sort of swimming and you've done kind of some kick drills, this is it. Otherwise, just pretend that you are a ballerina. I don't they do know. some flutters maybe? Oh, do they? I, I guess. So. When they sure. jump up in the air. That, oh, sure. Yeah, I yeah. guess I've seen that. Do whatever you need to Wally, do. Wally, what do you think? Yeah. Harness your inner ballerina. All right. Those are your five key movements. If you followed along with us, you realize it's a sneaky round one. It's a warm up round, but you're probably feeling your core already. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we take a small break here. And again, if you want to stretch out those wrists, you can. Now that we're officially starting the five minutes of core, the quick reminder is we're going to go all five exercises, 30 seconds a piece. We're going to go two rounds without taking a quick break here. Okay. Five, four, three, two, what if you're ready join us for those mountain climbers again you're holding a solid plank your knees are moving you don't have to go at any certain speed that's a variable if it's more your jam to kind of go slow and steady oh please do that if you want to go super fast and have your legs be a blur that works too again the main thing is that you look and feel good go so like uh, was that what was that um video game supersonic yeah sonic yeah sonic uh, yeah, yeah. Blur. three yeah. Two, one, on your backside, please. A hollow body hold. Very good. Again, low back pressing into the ground, arms and legs. I like to think they're moving away from each other, but you're really kind of scooping while he's saying hi, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something that I feel like you've told me to do with this one is um, try to press your belly button to your spine. Yeah. And yeah, that helps right. me. If I mentally think about that, it helps me get my back Four, flat on three, the ground. Good point. Two, one. Let's get back on those hands. Good work. Here comes that plank right. leg lift. Hands, arms, it, yeah, whatever you want to do. Plank leg lift again. First and foremost, it is a plank. Then you're raising those legs. And a nice little change. If you don't want to do a leg lift, if for some reason your back's a little twitchy, uh, you can do a side leg lift instead. And that's instead of lifting it up, you're really just pushing it out to the side. Got it. Swinging it out to the side. Mm -hmm. That can work. We don't do that here, but if you've done it before, 
you know, you can substitute mm -hmm. those. Three, two, one, let's see those Supermans. Good work, gang, good work. Good. This particular time, I'm choosing to do the on-off variety. So just kind of a rhythm, one, two, do an internal count. I like to use my breath, breathe in, reach out, breathe out, relax, or flip it. Either one will work. Again, on, stretch, put some distance, and when you're doing that, your body should be tight. You're gonna feel that core. Five, four, three, two, one. On your backside, you've got flutters. This is gonna be the end of round one, so hang in there. We've done a lot of hollow holds, a lot of very mm -hmm. core specific stuff. If you find the need to take a break, oh my gosh, take a break. It's totally fine. You're gonna see us do that. It burns. Oh this, yeah. The kind of endurance that it yeah, takes to do this good. core stuff is really hard. It feels like exercise like right away, which is Super. kind of fun yeah. and a neat challenge to do sometimes. Jump right in. Four, three, two, one, let's switch back to those mountain climbers. Now, some You guys did round one, way yeah, to go. Yeah, round one, we're done, woohoo. Again, here, I'm choosing to do a little crossover pattern. You can, as long as it's feeling well for you, experiment, right? I love, love when people experiment with different ways that they can move. You totally can rock that. You're nailing it. You've got about 10 seconds to go. Five, Getting ready to climb Mount Everest. Four, that's right, three, two, one on your backside, hollow body hold. Or just climb the playground stairs, yeah. you know, either one. I know this isn't gonna connect with a, a ton of people, but uh, what, when I'm doing hollow body holds, it reminds me when Maggie and I were camp counselors, uh, she would occasionally take me sailing. She knew how to sail, I didn't. And there were times where, I'm gonna get the, you know, the terminology is horrible, but when the boat would kind of tip onto its edge, and we'd have to lean way out. There was a strap for your feet. That's what I think of when I do these things. Mm. Three, two, one. Back to your hands or your forearms. You're gonna do those leg lifts. That sailing stuff is tough. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, physically demanding. What do you call that, hiking sure. out on the yeah, boat? Yeah, hiking out, yeah. Yeah, which is a good memory, it's always fun. Oh yeah, I mean, that holds. wind had to be really whipping for yeah. that. That was really fun. Yeah. Eight seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see one more Superman here. Big reach out. This time I'm trying to hold the whole time, which is a little different. I can't go quite as intense as when I'm going on up. Mm -hmm. But again, it's still a solid thing, right? You're reaching out. I'm reaching out, toes to the back of the room and try to touch the back wall with your toes. To the front, right? Try to okay. touch the front wall with your fingertips. Exactly right. Awesome. If you can do that, if you can touch the walls, you are either too close to the walls or you have superpowers. Yeah, like um, Elastic Girl. Like Elastic Girl. Three, Incredibles. Two, one. You're almost there on your backside for your flutters. One more round of 30 seconds. And I like to bend my knees um, yeah. when, whenever I'm doing hollow body hold or these flutters because, um, like Aaron has said, the most important thing is really to keep that back flat. Absolutely. So in order for me to do that, I need to bend my knees. I'm not quite uh, strong enough to keep my legs all the way straight. Yeah. Four, three, two, one. You did it. Nicely done. Yay! Give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, now a quick reminder. Uh, whenever we do our core Saturdays, that's also the day that we do our stretch, our Saturday stretch. And here's where we're going to introduce kind of a new stretch for you. This is called a cross leg sit. And again, this posture is a good one to kind of let you know if you need to do more stretches with this one. If you're in this particular posture, whether your knees are up or like you're gonna see us do in just a moment, we're gonna lay our legs flat. If in either of these postures you feel tightness anywhere, in your hip, your inner thigh, um, your backside, anywhere, it would be kind of a, a, a red flag for you to be like, oh man, I, I might need to do a little more stretching you know, in this area. So again, that's why we start with a little bit of the assessment. And, and the reminder is that this doesn't come from me, this comes from a program done by GMB, Gold Medal Bodies, called Focused Flexibility. I love what they've done, I wanna give them credit for it. I've just kind of taken it and made it a little bit of my own. So again, let's try both sides. Again, all we're doing here is what's called your cross leg sitting. And, this one's pretty easy to see where you'd have the benefit. A lot of people when they're sitting upright will either cross one leg over the other yeah. or rest one foot on their knee. It's a basic posture. It's kind of how we're built to move. It also does, these kind of stretches do a really good job of working on your hip and knee flexibility. So your ability to sit well, 
with or without a chair, your ability to squat, to lunge, really anything that involves your legs moving uh, is why we do these postures. So again, even like getting up and getting down, getting up the and ground, getting down, exactly right. Sliding your leg out of a car, right? I mean, like sure. that, that kind yeah. of twisting motion that it takes to stand up and sit down. And yeah. The reason that we do this is to keep you mobile, to keep you yep. fit and flexible and able to look and feel better, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, the key thing. So again, this by itself can be a stretch. This is this is a great stretch. It's also just a little posture check for you to know. The two main stretches that we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and show you right now. Now this first one is a new one for us in this particular program. This is called a camel or a half camel. And Maggie and I are gonna show you kind of different postures so you can see what's going on. Um, if your knees allow it, go ahead and kneel on the ground. Sometimes I'll put a cushion or a, you know, a blanket underneath. And you'll see that I have my toes kind of pulled up underneath me so it elevates my heels, gets me a little higher up. I do that so that I can more comfortably reach back. Now what I'm doing with both hands is a little more advanced. That takes quite a bit of flexibility and for a lot of people some practice. Uh, but Maggie is showing you the one arm variation. That one's so much easier and simpler mm -hmm. to get into. It allows you to do what you need to do. So again, feel free to do either side here. I should also mention if there's just no way that you can grab your heels or touch your heels, go ahead and lean back onto a, a stool, a couch, right? The idea is that you're just gently pushing those hips forward and giving yourself a chance to stretch. Okay, so that's our camel or half camel. And then the second stretch is one we've done before, if you've been following along with us, and that's our frogger stretch. We don't have room on our carpet for both Maggie and I to do it, so I'm letting her do it. But the reminder with the frogger stretch is that you're kind of uh, facing the ground, right? You're just leaning down to the ground, almost like a child's pose, but you're really focusing on putting some distance between your knees. And to do that, you can totally let your toes touch. Really, the idea is get your the rest of your posture comfortable. You can be laying flat on the ground, you can be on your forearms, you can kind of do whatever, but you're putting distance between your knees. Distance between your knees here, okay? Awesome, those are our two key stretches as well as our basic posture. Nice work, everyone. Remember, uh, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you just never miss a workout. And um, we are just happy to have you with us. Please let us know if you have any questions, any comments. Hope you have a great day and we are always here for you. We're on your team, Team Briggs. You can say you're, you're with Coach Briggs. <laughs> All right, gang, make it a great day.